everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. I am showing you a couple of projects I made as guest designer for the Not Too Shabby Shop. This is their box of the month. I am taking some leftover paper after I made this one cool project, and I'm going to be making another mini album. I already have a tutorial showing you how to make the mini album, so I'll link that in the description box, but I'm just going to show you the process of putting it together in this video. I'm starting out with a piece of 8.5 by 11 chipboard that I cut down uh, two pieces of 6.5 by 5.5 and, and one piece that's 2 inches by 6.5. Again, the measurements will be in the other video. I'm going to cover these pieces with some double-sided permanent adhesive and then I will cut these three pieces apart and I will lay them on my cardstock that I've already put spliced two pieces together. Again, there is another video that shows you in greater detail. I'm just showing you how quick and easy it is to make a little mini album. I really enjoy the process of covering mini albums. To me, it's sort of therapeutic. If I'm in my craft room and I'm not sure what to do, I will make some blank mini albums. I might put it on my Etsy site or I might save them for another project. Um, sometimes I'll make small ones knowing that I will have smaller scraps to use and I will be able to use it eventually. Now this paper that I'm going to be using from Not Too Shabby was part of their August Box of the Month Club. It is sold out but it's really a gorgeous paper line and I'm sure what they have coming up next will be just as fabulous. So you'll want to subscribe to the Not Too Shabby Box of the Month. The information will be in the description box to show you how to do it. All right, I'm just covering up the spine and now I'm going to take some paper, more 8.5 by 11. I'm going to cut it in half and I'm just going to use four pages uh, for this book. So it's a really simple construction. There's not a hinge with this. I'm just folding over a half inch tab on each one. I've got a pocket and again, it's so simple. If you've not made many albums, try this mini album or there are others in my channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see them. Uh, but go ahead and check out my channel for easy mini album tutorials. I have some more complex ones as well, but I have a whole series of let's make a mini album. So since the paper pad I'm using is six by six, I have to make some layers to cover the front and back inside and outside cover. So I just cut these a little bit bigger, layered another paper on top of it, and then eventually put the pattern paper on it. So I'll go ahead and do all four of these and then glue them down. The front cover gets a little bit different treatment, as you'll see. But uh, again, the front inside cover, the back inside cover, the front outside, and the back outside are all done with layering. For the front cover, I am using a uh, edge punch that I've had in my stash for quite a while. Just to add a little bit more interest, I am going to uh, add layers to this and wrap it in twine and then use that as just a little extra texture for the front cover. Yeah, my twine storage is a, a little different. I live and travel in my RV, so there isn't much room in my RV to store stuff, so I just try to make the best use of space possible. So I wrapped it around this little piece a couple of times and then tied a knot. I'm looking in my stash. I have a little metal um, arrow that I decide to add as a dangle next to this little bow that I tie. So I get that all on there. I'll add some permanent double-sided adhesive and then I'll put it on. So I add the front and back cover and then realize, oh no, I did it upside down. So I quickly pull it off and put it on. Now the one piece with the white, that's the front cover. And here's the little piece that will go to the side. So I'll put it on and burnish it. And then there's the inside cover and then the back cover. And then since I've already used some of this paper for a smaller quickie album. I have just a few scraps left. I think I had 12 pages, 12 six by six pieces and scraps. So I used some plain cardstock from my stash. 
to put inside the pocket. So I'll go ahead and add all those and then I glue the right side of the pocket down uh, once I have the inside of it together. So here's the dark brown, then glue that little piece down. And I try to coordinate the pages from the left side to the right side. Sometimes they match, sometimes they don't. But uh, of course, since you're using this collection, everything does coordinate. You've got all the same colors throughout. I love this page with the lanterns. So to coordinate, I used a blue and I know I'll have other scraps on this page. I decided I sprayed some water on where I have my glue. I usually have a, something down on my surface, but I just was lazy today. All right, now I'm looking through my scraps to decide where I'm gonna put all of the leftover pieces. I have some that are big enough for a photo mat, some that aren't, some that I'm going to put just on the side of the page. I do want to make sure I save this little piece to do the front cover. I'm using a punch to do a couple of edge punches, corner punches, uh, because I wanted to just have it stand out a little bit. So I'll go ahead and glue this down. I just again wanted to save this piece of paper so I don't use it on something else. So I will take it, I'll grab my ATG and just stick it on the front. I'm not going to glue it yet. I, I still want to figure out placement. I know I want that piece of ephemera. I'm not sure where. So again, I take my little ATG, stick it on so I don't lose it. And uh, I'll be able to easily take it off once I'm ready to play with it. It sort of gives me a chance to audition these pieces all right, so these are the leftover die cut ephemeras from the collection. So I go through with pieces I have left and go page by page and just decide what I'm going to use. If I'm not sure, I might just sort of put it on hold and move to the next page. I just play around with it until I'm sure I uh, know exactly how I'm going to do it. I had these three trees. And I had these logs and I just thought the logs would be good because we've got that darker brown background inside the pocket. But I wanted to cover the pocket because we've got that glitter paper. Now it's just paper that looks like glitter. It really is fabulous, but it doesn't get glitter all over you. I did ink up some of the die cuts just to tone them down a little bit because they were bright white and uh, the paper that I'm using doesn't have any bright white left. So again, just playing around, just trying to find different um, looks using what I have. I have that one blue flower that's on the page, and I really wanted to use it here to balance out the three lanterns on the bottom of the opposing page. But I needed it to stick out some more, so I glued it down onto this coordinating uh, cardstock, and I'm just fussed cutting around it, just trying to leave about an eighth of an inch around the border. Just so again, it stands out just a little bit more. I'm gluing down just the top and the side so it is a tuck spot. You still can put a photo underneath it. I have a lantern and a flashlight that I add to the page. So here I've got another flower. I've got a camera and I have a compass. So I'll put those down. I have a compass also. Just trying to figure out where the best spot is. And I put the compass at the top. Okay, I think I'm done. Now I'm looking at the cover, trying to figure out what to do. I'm taking the cover page that comes with the collection and cutting down where it says Outdoor Adventures. I'll back it on a piece of cardstock and glue it down to the far right of this cover. I'm just cutting this down. I'll glue the Outdoor Adventure verbiage on. I could have made a fishtail, but there was so much going on with this with the edge punch and the corner rounding. I didn't want I didn't want another thing. And then here again, I want to have this piece of ephemera stand out. So I glue it onto a piece of the craft color cardstock, cut around it. And that'll help it stand out a little bit on top of the paper we have. And I go through my garbage and find that piece of chipboard left over from 
when I cut the chipboard and I'm just taking a pair of heavy scissors and just trying to cut around it because I am going to use chipboard as a spacer so uh, this element is raised on the cover but I don't have any big pieces of pop dots or um, or the thick adhesive I don't know what the word is I'm looking for so we just add chipboard plus it's environmentally safe and plus I get to take it out of my garbage can so I add some of those pieces I will add reasonable amount of glue and center it on that center piece and I like it you can't see how it's popped up but it really gives uh, that touch of dimension that it really needs here all right, let's do a final walkthrough. So here's the cover, here's the twine. I've got three strands of it going tied up at the top and there's that little metal piece I had in my stash. There's the piece of ephemera that's popped up on centered on this little rectangle. And then there's our title, Outdoor Adventures. So here we've got room to put a small photo and there is a tuck spot there. Here is a, a photo mat. And then I did have these extra pieces left from the uh, die cut ephemera, and I just added them to the pages. Now, there's a piece of ephemera there. Now, whoever gets this book might want to add these to their photos or not. This way they get to pick the hair color and whatnot. Uh, here we have another tuck spot, and then this is open, so it gives you room to put a photo right there. I liked having these tuck spots. It gives you room to journal that's not like in your face. So if you don't like your handwriting, it's no big deal. Another spot to put a photo. And of course you can journal or put a photo on the back. I didn't put anything on here. I just loved everything about that paper. And here's where we have the trees. Again, this is open and there is the gal that goes with that picture. And then here is I used this map piece. I loved, loved, loved that. Now it is sideways, but it's not a big deal. If you're gonna put a photo, you're gonna cover most of it. So we've got that little tuck spot. There is the compass. I added a compass to sort of a collage. We've got a flower, the camera, and then the compass there. And I added these little cameras into the pocket. There is a, another photo map. And on the back page, so this, is just a piece of plain cardstock that you can put in. This is just glued on the top, bottom, and the side, so it makes a great uh, tuck spot, plus these help add something to the photo. And then here's that one piece of ephemera. Again, you can, it, it will tuck underneath here and here and under there. And then our back page, there is our spine, and there we go. Really quick and easy. I'll put the link to show you how to make this. Thanks, Jamie, for allowing me to get the design. This was such a fun collection to use. It was right up my alley. Um, I already have photos in one. I'll probably uh, save this and put some photos in this to give it to somebody that we travel with. Thanks again, and don't forget, if you're interested in this paper, look below in the description box. It tells you all about the box of the month. Now, this box of the month is already sold out. So see the link in the description box on how you can sign up for the waiting list to get on the list for the next not-too-shabby box of the month. In the meantime, you can pick up the paper pads individually. The link of those is in the description box as well. So thanks so much for watching and have a fabulous day.